Hey, what's happening guys? This little black box that you see before you is the Micro Bit X V6. This is a high frequency SDR transceiver. That means it receives and transmits with an output power of about 5 watts nominal. I, I've read that it will go up to about 7 on some frequencies. So this is a kit. I bought it from Gigaparts here in the United States who obviously just imported them from India from HF Signals. And the reason I know that is because I bought the original Microbit X20 like seven or eight years ago when uh, it first came out. And it was simply a uh, 20 meter only SDR. And just like this, it is based on uh, an Arduino, which I think is super cool. So the kit price on this from Gigaparts here in the U.S. is the exact same price that uh, HF Signals sells them for out of India, $209. I did uh, pay a little bit extra for shipping because I wanted to get it quickly. Um, so I actually an extra forty dollars, and uh, my total cost was still under two hundred and fifty dollars for this radio. And my intention for this video was to do a complete build and assembly video because there's only a couple of them I found out there, and none of them are really very detailed. And then I found out why. Let me show you. So when you open the, the, the outer box, you're going to get this box assembled just like this without the knobs and the screen, of course. And then a couple of little boxes of uh, accessory parts. You get a really nice rundown on all the parts and tells you where to use each one, along with a rundown of what is included. And just a, a, a simple little like welcome and you can find more information here so I assembled this it took me probably about an hour taking my time but let me show you why I didn't bother to make a complete assembly video and come in here and come on down Right, well, that's as far down as I can get so all right so you're gonna see whoops three separate boards in here this is the main board down here and you can see all of the uh, filter coils and relays for the filtering on the back plus the output transformers these are IRF 510 MOSFETs there's some trimmers on the board and Really, that's all that is on that main board. Then we're going to roll up this way. And now you see we have the little Arduino Nano looking thing here. And this is where the brains of the operation are. It is attached to a uh, 2.8 inch color touchscreen. And they've taken the uh, USB mini connector here and rounded it out to a nice little breakout board on the back. And there is your uh, BNC connector, uh, power barrel jack, and really, that is all there is to it. So the entire assembly on this thing really just consisted of bolting this main board down with four screws. Okay, I'm sorry. Take off the front and back panels, four screws each. Bolt down the main board with four screws bolt the front and back panels back on insert they call it the Arduino that that accessory board with the Arduino on it into that uh, header there going into the main board screw it into the front of the case add this connector bolt the speaker into the top and you're done that's it that's the entire assembly I mean there is really no reason to do an assembly video for this. I think it is uh, quite cool the way it is. However, this board, this kit, this radio is designed for tinkering. So in addition to this, there are some other things added. Let me show you. 
so when you finish assembling everything you're going to be left over with some bits like there are a number of oops, each of the different types of screws and nuts and uh, three or four separate cable assemblies but don't panic because if you're red here on your uh, packing list we have optional speaker connection optional battery connection optional DC connection and an optional audio connection it's all made for experimentation and there's another fella um, Dr. Ian Lee KD8CEC who has developed and more advanced firmware for this that works with Nexteon touchscreens because in Arduino Nano running an SDR radio and trying to provide the graphics and everything for this is too much so the original is very simple I mean it works fantastic the original one did anyway the UBIT X20 and I'm sure this is gonna work fine too they work fantastic as they are they're very simple radios but you can see back here we have that um, optional external DC in so if you wanted to run this from a battery pack simple right back hiding under the uh, USB board there's another two pin connector back there and I think there's yeah that eight pin connector it's gonna be hard to show you here let me try to get in here that eight pin connector is right down there under all that stuff so I do intend to do uh, Dr. Lee's modification modifications to the UBIT X I don't know when but I am going to do them but I haven't powered this thing up yet so uh, since you're here why don't we do it together let me get the screws back in the top of this and we'll get set up all right, got the top back on. That's not good. Lucky we found that. Could have been a problem. Anyway, so there's a BNC connector. I've got a BNC to SO239. So we can hook up to my dipole outside. And we need power. I got barely enough room to stretch these wires from my power supply. Make sure everything is off. Power supply is set for 13 volts at 3 amps. Power supply is on. It's showing me no draw on anything, so let's power it up. Hey, look at that. So it boots up on the 40 meter band. We're at a seven, 7100. Oh, and it tunes. Very nice. Kind of slow. I know there's something about fast tune. There we go. Let's see if we can find anything. How do we get out of fast tuning? Well, maybe that's it. Let me see if I can find something. Okay, the bands aren't great, but here is FT8. So I know it is receiving. I absolutely hate this tuning encoder. Watch. 15, 20, 20, 25. Why? I didn't tell it to go 25. And 
that is incredibly slow. Unbelievably slow. And, and it moves after I'm done. But, like I said, this thing is made to be modified. So we can definitely do some modifications. All right. Next, I am going to hook up the microphone that came with it. It is this microphone, which is actually not a half bad feeling microphone. With a little pluggerino here. See if we can't find an empty frequency and see what kind of power it puts out. Okay, I found a pretty empty spot out there. I've been checking for a couple minutes. So keep your eye up here on this. And we'll see. I've been getting, I think, about three or four watts out. We'll see. Is this frequency in use? WW8PR. Is this frequency in use? WW8PR. Testing, 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 testing. So you can see we're getting about five there. Let's put it into CW. Four point one on twenty meters. Not terrible. I mean forty meters, not seven meters. All right, let's see what's going on. Is this frequency in use? WW8PR. Is this frequency in use? WW8PR. It's not showing me any SWR at all. So I'm not going to play around there. Uh, go back to 20. Is this frequency in use? WW8PR. Still not showing me any. SWR, that's really strange. Huh. But yeah, the UBITX uh, V6 seems to be working okay. One more thing we're going to do is uh, we're going to have a look at what it looks like on the spectrum analyzer just to make sure we're not getting a whole bunch of uh, spurious emissions. So hang on for that. All right, we're all set up. We're on a clear frequency. WW8PR testing, testing. This is WW8PR testing. One, two, three, four, five. So it looks okay there, but let's uh, let's test for harmonics. So we'll just go back. Measure. Whoops. What did I do? Measure harmonic at fourteen point two tree tree. WW8PR, testing, 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 one, two, one, two. That is fantastic. Um, I believe it's up to 30, 30 megahertz. You, the harmonics have to be 43 dB down from the fundamental, and you're not even seeing any there. So WW8PR, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, four, three, two, one, two, three, four, five. So that is looking very nice. Now let's take a look at power. So here we are in receive. Back to things sitting there. There we go. I'm giving it 13 volts, and you can see it's pulling up. 0.3559, so 0.4 amps for about four and a half watts on receive. Now let's try it on transmit. WW8PR testing one, two, one, two, testing audio, audio. Not bad, not bad at all. Uh, bought that many years ago, shortly faithfully. And I'm all about my third set of tubes. The, uh, the amplifier is gone, probably 20 years old. And uh, they are 811 A's. Uh, I've heard all kinds of different things. And uh, if you don't overdrive it and you set it up right, they'll last for quite a while. We certainly enjoy the hobby. Uh, we go on 160 at night. I have a huge dipole for 160 meters. So there it is. 
the UBIDX V6 in its natural form. I am going to do the uh, firmware upgrade and the Nexteon screen so that I can have cat control. And then I think this is going to become my digital modes radio because you only need a few watts for digital. Uh, I know I didn't mention it before. This costs uh, $209 whether you order it from uh, HF signals or gigaparts. It's the same price. I paid a little bit extra. I paid uh, for some expedited shipping to have it here in a couple days. So my total price was $241. And you know who we thank for that? The patrons. This was purchased with patron money. That's what I use patron money for is to buy things for the channel so that we can have a look at them. If you're not a patron yet, please uh, take a look at the links down below for patron and consider joining and supporting the channel. It's only a dollar a month. Anyway, what do I think of this radio and would I recommend it to you? If you have experience in electronics and you have experience in radios, you know how to do an alignment and you're not afraid to get in there and tinker with the electronics on that board, then this will be a fun and interesting little radio to play with. However, this is not a first radio. This isn't even a second radio. This is a project, a toy. If you're looking for a first radio, I, I can't recommend enough the uh, Shegu G90. You can get this for less than $500. It's 20 watts. It's everything you need all in one package. Yeah, this is $209. But by the time you do everything you need to do to get this up to the level of that, you're going to have another $200 in it. No doubt. The next tee on screen alone is uh, $30. If you're looking at any type of uh, amplification to boost your signal, uh, above the five watts this points out you're looking at another minimum say hundred and seventy nine dollars So now you've already added two hundred dollars Do I like it? I can't tell yet It intrigues me and it uh, it sparks my curiosity It's something interesting. I'll put a link down below if uh, something like this interests you too. If not That's all I got for today I will make a video on the alignment and I will make another video on uh, the upgrade when I get that done. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Sorry about that. Give me a thumbs up. Feel free to like, comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. Check out the Patreon. And also, there's the Super Thanks down below. If you like this, you can throw a couple bucks into Super Thanks, like throwing money in a tip jar. You certainly don't have to, but if you do, I appreciate it. That's it. I'm out. Peace.